What's going on, everybody? Special guest here. It's Torian Wilson, a crafting lineman, here to break down Miami's signing class on the offensive line. A lot of intriguing prospects to get into. Some high-level guys, high, high-level guys, and some guys a little bit under the radar. Torian's, I know you've worked out with, with most of them, uh, but just how, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing great, man. Um, you know, just getting ready to kick off this off-season training, um, putting a plan together for that. Um, and then getting ready to celebrate Christmas, man. Christmas is around the corner, so everything is good. Yeah, it's good. You know, this is great. I mean, we've had a chance to talk before. Uh, you know, when I speak about the offensive line, it's completely different than than your eyes. You, you, this is what you do. This is what you've done as a player, but also continuing to work now. So your, your insight's going to be great for everybody watching here. Let's get right into it. You know, Miami, again, five guys. Francis Maui goes the headliner, five-star recruit number one offensive tackle in the country. We've spoken about Francis in the past, but again, with him um, and working with him, maybe can you speak on his mentality, the way he took to coaching, and, and then also what he's bringing to the table, essentially. Why is he so highly regarded? Yeah, I mean, you know, you, the, the proof is, is in the pudding. Uh, when it comes to Francis, man, when you actually work with him and, and, and be around this kid, you understand why he's – you know, the number one offensive lineman, you know, in the country, you know, because his IQ is there, uh, the love of the game is there. And not only that, just off the field too, man, He he's a, he's a, you know, he's a playful guy. Like he enjoys, you know, just being around the guys. He enjoys being around the coaches uh, and things like that. And then also, if you just look at his technique, you know, his technique is, is, is very sound. Um, he's a guy that you can, like he can come in and, and possibly start, you know, from day one. You know, he has that ability to do that. So um, I, I think that's what a few reasons why he's uh, definitely regarded so high. You know, with his ability, you know, again, you know, tackle guard, is there something, is there a spot in mind where you feel like is his best spot moving forward? And it's it's not to say he can't do anything. It seems like wherever they wanted to put him, but is there a spot when you look at him where, where you feel like he's he definitely should be there? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like he's a guy who can play tackle. You know, obviously that's what that's what he's played. Um, but he has the body frame and the body type that he can move inside if needed. Um, but you know, I think when he comes in, it's wherever the 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 need is, you know, right off the bat. Because again, he can play either guard or tackle. That's what makes him special. You know, is there a difference, left side, right side in particular, uh, with a guy that saying, for, just for instance, is there a spot or attribute that you're looking for that, look, this is exactly why he should be on the left side, whether it's guard or tackle or, or right? And maybe is there something with Francis that you look for that you think he'd be better at? Yeah, I mean, you know, to be on the left side, you know, it, it's a different piece, you know, um, in the sense of you're protecting the blind side or the quarterback. So for for one, the coach have to have trust in you, and also the quarter, uh, quarterback have to have trust in you as well. Um, your feet has to be impeccable when you play that left side, because again, you're protecting the quarterback's blind side. He cannot see what's happening behind him, so he has to have the full faith and trust in you um, that you're going to get the job done. You know that's what it really comes down to. And will do I think he can play either side? Of course. Um, you know, I haven't seen much of him, you know, on the right side. So you can tell that he's, you know, he, he's dominating or predominantly on the left side. So, um, you know, but, you know, I think he can play either or, you know, I, I think he he's a guy just from being around him. I think he's a guy, if coach needs him to be on the right side, he will play right side. And I don't think he will, you know, ask questions about it. I think he's the guy who's, who, um, whatever the team needs. You know, before we get into these other four guys, I, I'm curious on your take on the keys for any freshman offensive lineman when they arrive on in on campus that first year, Francis included. But again, kind of just any of these guys, what, what do you think is the biggest key or, or advice you would give a young or a freshman offensive lineman going into it? Again, you, you've been through this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, one is just being coachable, right? You have to be a sponge. You know, you you're you're starting over. You know, essentially you're starting over. So, yes, you may be one of the top guys coming in, but you still have to fight for a spot, you know. And some of the key things is getting with some of the older guys that's doing it the right way. You know, make sure you stay in, in your coach's ear, you know, listen to what he said, listen to his terminology, right? So the guys who usually get on the field the quickest are the guys who can, not necessarily the physical, 
the the more physical guy is more is the guy who's mentally ready, you know, because you know you're you're now dealing with a, a broader playbook, you know, it's different from when you was in high school. You're dealing with, you know, so many different things. And one thing I, I have to say is that he definitely has an advantage coming from IMG program because I'm pretty sure they're they're on the the college NFL type of scale as well when they do things. Um, but that's really what separate guys. It's really the mental aspect of it. Yeah, let, let's stay with IMG. Miami got another guy in Antonio Tripp. Uh, what, what's your level of working with him and, and your thoughts on him? Obviously not as highly regarded as Francis. Nobody else is, uh, or most of them aren't. But just your, your thoughts on Antonio, he decides to make that move down to IMG for a senior year. Yeah, I mean, uh, I worked with Antonio as well at the uh, Under Armour camps, um, working with him and being able to coach him. Um, you know, I, I think he's a guy, again, intelligent, intelligent guy, um, you know, not as as tall or as big as uh, Francis. You know, he's about 6'4", maybe about 305. Um, and, you know, I think he's a guy who can really dominate in the interior. You know, I know they had him at center. I think that's where he stays, um, you know, unless they need help, you know, at the guard position. But I think he stays in the interior. He does not kick out to to the tackle position. Uh, how difficult is it to to play center at the college level in, in the sense of learning, you know, everything you have to do? And if you're involved in checks and the whole thing, but understand essentially what the rest of the line is doing, the offense, just just maybe the challenges for any uh, for an offensive line center for a lineman there. Yeah, uh, really, is is mentally is probably the hardest position on the offensive line mentally because you have to know what your assignment and you have to know what everyone else's assignment is. You know, I, um, you know, I like to call it the quarterback of the offensive line. You know, that's exactly what you're doing. You're putting everybody in position to, to be successful. So it, it's, it's definitely a harder position, but as long as you, you know, you get the, the key concepts, again, you have to stay with your coaches, you know, understand the game plan, understand what he wants to get done. And once you do that, you know, it, it I don't want to say it becomes easier, but uh, it becomes doable. And Miami was certainly glad to have uh, their their offensive line class, but to be able to add to it with Samson Okunlola, uh, another highly regarded tackle, offensive lineman, one of the best in the country. You know, w- what have you noticed with Samson and, and working with him? And um, again, you know, different style, it, it looks like, but just maybe what he's bringing to the table, what makes him the highly regarded prospect that he is? Man, again, like, you know, similar to Francis, you know, these uh, – it's, it's a few offensive linemen um, in the high school level that impresses me. And those two definitely uh, do that. Samson, you know, again, he reached out to me, you know, I, I worked with him a few times. He reached out to me um, about getting film sessions in. You know, he wants to understand the game. Um, so that really, you know, that put a smile on my face because that shows me that he's a guy that, you know, takes football serious. Now, when I'm talking about the physical aspect, I think, in my opinion, this is my opinion, I think he has probably one of the best feet uh, uh, footwork, you know, when it comes to all of, you know, high school guys that's coming out in his class. You know, his his footwork is is definitely one of the one of the best that I've seen in this class. You know, he he understands, you know, uh, separation between him and the defender. You know, the way he moves his feet, his feet is constantly uh, um, in a pattern. You know, so um, he definitely had one of the best footwork that I've seen of all of this class. How rare is that footwork? Let's say on that with footwork, um, not just at a young age, but a big, big guy, you know, tall, tall, good size there. How rare mm-hmm. is that to have that kind of footwork that you're speaking of? Um, you seem to be really overly impressed with, with what you've seen with him. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's something that you have to work on and you can tell he he has. You know, um, you know, just talking with him, you know, we went, you know, down the line of when he was first growing up and how he was a bigger kid. You know, he was he was bigger than most people, um, oversized. And he just said how he just cut weight once he got to high school. He just kept like focusing and, and you know, cut weight, got down um, to 305, 300 right now. So, you know, that right there tells me that he's disciplined, you know, uh, for him to do that at the high school level. Most kids are not doing that. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that right there shows me that he loves the game. And, um, and I think also what that did too, it, it helps him with his footwork, you know, not being as heavy, you know, it, it allows him to move light, 
you know, when it comes to his footwork. But, you know, you don't you don't see a whole lot of guys, man, with, with the type of footwork that he has. Um, it's something that you definitely have to have to harp on. It's definitely something that you have to work on. I kind of going back to those film sessions, what were those like? Um, what was his maybe his base in terms of understanding and then maybe some things that you added and, and maybe try to help him with, with helping learn them, learn, learn the, what, you, what you're watching on film. Yeah. I mean, honestly, like it, like his, his IQ level is, is, um, is, is definitely up there, you know, um, just, just understanding the assignment, understanding what the defense, if the defense does something, what are they trying to get to, right? Understanding if the front lines up in a certain way, what are they trying to get to? Um, and also looking at the DBs, you know, that's one thing I was letting them know, like the, the, the safeties, they're going to, with you being that tackle, the safety is going to tell you the story a lot of times, right? Looking at the rotation of those guys, understanding the coverage, right? That was something that, you know, I struggled with until I got the college. Once I got the college, I started to understand, but the earlier you can learn this, the understand you'll, the, the more you'll understand the overall picture of what's going on. So understanding cover two, cover three, cover four, you know, and what that means for you as an offensive lineman. You know, there's a lot to that goes into it, as you're mentioning, understanding the, the line and responsibilities. With with Frankie Tenelau, you know, just his background from Australia, still new to American football. Uh, what, what's kind of been your impressions of him? Again, physically, there, there's a lot to like uh, upside in, in that sense, but maybe your interactions with Frankie and, and your thoughts on him. Yeah, I think also, man, Frankie, you know, similar to I know we're going to get to Tommy, but, you know, similar. Those, those two guys, man, are maulers, right? They're big, they're tough, um, they're physical. So, you know, you can tell when I look at Tommy and I look at Frankie, you know, when, I, when I'm looking at those two guys, I'm in the back of my head. I'm saying, OK, Miami is they're trying to make a statement, you know, you know, letting guys know that because those two guys are interior guys. Right, they're interior guys. Now, can they kick out the tackle? I think they have the ability to kick out the tackle. But me personally, I would keep those guys inside. Um, again, Frankie being new to the game, I think he has a tremendous upside because he hasn't even reached close to his peak yet. You know, he's still learning the game, still understanding the game, still understanding the ins and out, uh, still understanding the concepts. Right, it's so many little different things that you have to understand playing this position. So I think that right now, man, he he's his upside is tremendous. You know, you touched on something with the, just these two guys in particular, but you're talking about size. I'm curious what the transition is like in terms of, look, all these guys, especially the, these five that were mentioned, the size was overwhelming at the high school level for a lot of their cases, either their opponents, uh, either in practices or games. What's that transition like, Torian, that maybe either you went through and maybe kind of something you're helping these guys about to go through when they get to that next level and, and the keys for being, look, and, and I know it's what you're teaching these guys with crafting linemen, you know, it's not just about being big and, and strong. You, there's a lot that goes into it. What's kind of your message in, in, in particular with young linemen as they make this jump? Well, honestly, like the biggest thing is the mentality. Right. Because you're going from high school, where you're being praised where, you know, you, you're, you're doing everything right. And um, now you're going to where and, and honestly, now you're being recruited, you're being loved, your recruiters is loving you. They're telling you all these good things. Now, once you get there, reality hits, you're not being recruited no more. So now you're going to see the real deal now. So now it's all about being mentally tough. Right. Because it's going to be some hard days in college. It's going to be some hard days when you first get there. You're not used to the, uh, uh, to the camp atmosphere. You're not used to being there all day from 6 a.m. to, you know, curfew time, 1030. Right. So mentally, you just have to be prepared. Mentally, you have to be strong. Right. We always talk about the physical part. You're 6, 6, 330. We, you're physical. Right. But now it's the mental part. Can you handle the, the, the tough coaching? Can you handle you may be getting beat your whole whole first day. Can you handle that, right? Can you shake back and understand, okay, I got beat this play. Now, how can I fix it and get better on the next play? So now those are two different things that you're kind of going through because, again, like I said, you're coming from high school where, you know, you're, you're the man, right? You're beating up on people. You're probably the biggest guy on the field. So now where you have other guys that are just as big as you, and now you're dealing with guys who are 23, 24-year-olds who, who's been in the weight room for four or five years now. So now you have to deal with that as well. So mental part, I think, is really like the key concept to just 
getting to the next level and, and overcoming. Torian, is there something with Coach Cristobal and, and Mirabal? Look, we we've we know that the offensive line's big to them. Uh, is there something in particular that you feel like they really hammer down? Essentially, what I'm asking is, what does it take for an offensive lineman to play for these two guys? What, what's something in particular that you've noticed and you just know uh, about them that that's really important? And because obviously, it's a point of emphasis for Cristobal uh, now that he's taken over and ever since he's been a coach, essentially. Yeah. So I mean. Really, the key things is being smart, physical, and just mentally tough. You know, I've been around Cristobal and Mirabal. They recruited me when I was coming out of high school. And those were some of the uh, key things that they told me when I came out. You know, for me, honestly, no no offense to anyone, but Mirabal is one of the best offensive line coaches and Cristobal as well. So, you know, I, I respect those guys highly, highly respect those guys. And, you know, those three things, if you can be those, have those three things, I think you can be successful with, with those two guys. And also to be successful, you got to check out crafting linemen if you're a lineman uh, trying to get better. 100%. So you got to work with Torian Wilson. So I appreciate you taking the time. A lot of knowledge here on these guys and also your mentality to this position. So I appreciate you taking the time. Take care. No, thank you. Thank you.